Welcome back to my inner sanctum. I'm your hostess, Countess Elizabeth, mistress of the macabre. Once upon a time, my fiends, train wrecks were very common. Today, we will go back to a time where travel by train was risky, and train wrecks were much more common than they are today. Previously, I covered the deadliest train accident, the Great Train Wreck of 1918. But on that video, I mentioned a circus train wreck as well. Today, we will talk about the deadliest circus train accident, the Hagenbeck-Wallace circus train wreck of 1918. So let us get ready to see the circus and get on a ride on the train so we can explore our grotesque curiosity. The Hagenbeck-Wallace circus train wreck occurred on June 22, 1918, during the last months of World War I, and was one of the worst train wrecks in U.S. history. The Hagenbeck-Wallace circus was the nation's third largest circus, and was considered the Midwestern version of the East Coast's P.T. Barnum show. When the Hagenbeck-Wallace show came to town, visitors could expect some of the most superbly trained animals, renowned trapeze artists, and breathtaking equestrian routines. The circus had just completed two performances in Michigan City, Indiana, and was traveling overnight the 45 miles to nearby Hammond. The Hagenbeck-Wallace circus used old wooden train cars that were lit with oil lamps. Again, with the old wooden train cars! The circus train had two train segments, and the segment that was loaded with animals had been dispatched earlier, leaving the train with all the performers and workers on the tracks. The first train carrying the circus animals cruised to its destination with no problems, but the engineers on the second circus train halted their progress to fix a hot box. From what I can understand, it's a bearing on those old trains, and if you run out of oil, those bearings get hot. And if the bearings get too hot, it could cause a fire. In the early morning hours of June 22nd, 1918, engineer Alonzo Sargent was at the throttle of a Michigan Central Troop train used to transport soldiers with 20 empty steel Pullman cars. He was aware that his train was closely following the slower circus train. Sargent, an experienced man at the throttle, had slept little, if at all, the preceding 24 hours. The effects of the lack of sleep, several heavy meals, some kidney pills, and the gentle rolling of the locomotive are thought to have caused him to fall asleep at the controls. The driver blew past several stop signals, and then the lamps of several of the circus engineers trying desperately to stop the oncoming train. It was around 4 a.m. when the train's steel frame Pullman cars smashed into the wooden circus coaches at speeds between 25 to 60 miles per hour. And, according to contemporaneous newspaper reports, the sound of the collision was so loud that nearby farmers awoke and hurried to see what happened. The military train was going at such a high rate of speed that it split through the caboose in five coaches of the circus train like a hot knife through butter. Upon impact, the circus train's oil lamps ignited the wooden cars and a fire quickly spread. Henry Miller, the assistant light manager was among the survivors thrown from the wreckage with minor injuries. He states, I was in the last coach next to the caboose, and I was asleep when we were hit. I woke to the sound of splintering wood. Then there was another crash, and another, and another. The train buckled on itself. It parted in the center as clean as though it had been sliced with a giant knife. Survivors clawed their way out of the debris or called for help before the fire engulfed them. Acrobat Eugene Enos, trapped beneath some wooden beams, received aid from his wife Mary and Lon Moore, a clown. We pulled him clear just as the flames licked at him, Mary later told the Chicago Daily Tribune. Most of the 86 who were killed in the train wreck perished in the first 35 seconds after the collision. But most weren't so lucky. The fire spread so quickly that the crash survivors risked their own lives to pull friends and family out of the wreckage. Although Gary, Indiana, and Hammond fire departments arrived as quickly as possible, the only source of water were nearby shallow marshes. A wrecking crane was also brought to the accident site to dig people out, but couldn't initially be used because the heat from the fire was too intense. The Daily Gate City and Constitution Democrat, an Iowa newspaper, wrote later that day, The task of identifying the dead and seriously injured were, was almost hopeless. Not only were many of the bodies burned so badly that recognition was impossible, but practically everyone on the train was killed or hurt. More than 100 people were injured in the accident, and 86 were killed, including some of the circus's famed performers 
Animal Trainer Millie Jewell dubbed the girl without fear. Jeannie Ward Todd, an aerialist and member of the Flying Wards. Bareback rider Louise Contrell and Wild West rider Verna Connor. Strongman brothers Arthur and Joseph Derricks and his wife and two sons of Chief Clown Joseph Coyle. In the aftermath of the accident, the families of the deceased performers struggled with who to blame. The railway company? The engineer driving the empty train, Alonjo Sargent, who was arrested and charged with manslaughter? The circus company itself? All of them seemed to shirk any blame. One spokesperson for the Interstate Commerce Commission even released a statement to the Chicago Daily Tribune saying, We do everything we can to discourage the use of wooden train cars on passenger trains and urge the substitution of steel ones. That's all we can do. As for the survivors, they decided the show must go on. Despite the tremendous physical and psychological toll of the accident, the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus only missed two performances, thanks to other circuses providing equipment and crew. Sargent, who was under arrest, refused to testify at any of the hearings on the advice of his counsel. In his report of the accident to the officials of the railroad company, he made the following statement. I was called shortly after 8 p.m. June 21st for the Deadhead Equipment West Engine 8485 for 1015 and left Kalamazoo, Michigan at 1035. Had been up since 5 a.m. June 21st, deadheading from my home in Jackson on train number 41 and had little to no sleep during the day. Had a couple of heavy meals before going out, realizing that I would not get anything more to eat until some time next morning. Before reaching the next signal, I dozed on account of the heat in the cab and missed it, not realizing what happened to me until within 75 to 90 feet. I awoke suddenly and saw the tail or marker lights showing red on a train directly ahead of me. Not realizing that the rear end of this train was so close, I started to make a service application but before completing it, placed a brake valve handle into the emergency position. We struck almost instantly after making the brake application, wreck happening about 4.05 a.m. June 22nd, and I stayed there for an hour or more assisting at getting people out of the wreckage. I am in perfect physical condition, as well as mental condition, and have no illness within 25 or 30 years requiring service of a doctor. There is nothing defective about the air brakes or other mechanism of the engine or train that I was operating, nor was there any defective condition of any signal or track upon which I was operating to the best of my knowledge. The accident was due solely to the fact that I accidentally fell asleep, and I had no intent to injure any person. Nor was same done with malice, but solely through accident, as aforesaid. The ICC report concluded, This accident was caused by engine man sergeant being asleep, and from this cause, failing to observe the stop indication automatic signal 2581, and the warnings of the flagman of the circus train, and to be governed by them. The report was also critical of the older wooden cars whose oil lamps ignited the fire immediately after the collision. In the following weeks, 53 of the deceased performers were offered burial in a large plot in the Woodlawn Cemetery in Chicago, which had been purchased by the Showman's League, a fraternal order created in 1913 to support men and women in show business. Only five victims had marked graves. The rest were burned too badly to be identified. When the coffins arrived, More than 1,500 mourners gathered to pay their respects. The graves were memorialized with a stone elephant, its trunk drooping in sadness. Well, that was truly a grotesque tale. An accident that happened all because one man fell asleep at the wheel. I can see how this story was more sensationalized than the previous train wreck case I covered. Because not only was it a deadly wreck, but it was also a deadly fire that broke out and killed many people as well with those pesky wooden train cars that fueled the blaze, made their souls rest in peace. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe, like, and share if you would also like to keep exploring our grotesque curiosity. We'll meet again in the darkness of the night.